privilege is blind. Three, that's the rate at which blacks are killed compared to whites. But after Ferguson, my professor preaches that we can't know what happened. I sigh. 70, that's how many more times US police killed citizens compared to other first world nations. But if those citizens get fed up, fed up, we hear violence is never the answer. I heard he had a drug problem. Don't forget, what about black on black violence? But what about the violence that kills hundreds, hundreds of unarmed black citizens every single year? Cops are here to protect us. Protect who? White police, white police killing black suspects twice a week. But you insist, you insist, all lives matter. But why, why can a police kill a 12 year old boy on camera and see no jail time? Why was Sandra Bland pulled over? Why did Freddie Gray not make it out of the van? Out of the van. Why can't a black boy walk around in a hoodie? Hands up, head on the dashboard, shut your mouth, just shut your mouth. We don't need Blue Lives Matter Facebook posts. We need cops, stop. Cops to stop targeting black people, stop. We need black brothers, black sisters to feel safe in their own skin. I personally have not had any experience with the Black Lives Matter movement, but like through the news articles, um, through like media and talking to friends and family, uh, I've like talked about it a lot and I've heard a lot about it. Um, one thing that inspired, one of the things that inspired my poem was I feel like a lot of times I hear people, usually white people, um, talk like making excuses for police brutality, and like like the things I mentioned like oh I heard he's a drug addict, oh what about black on black violence, kind of like ignoring the real problem. I think it's important to hold police officers accountable and to realize that just because they have a badge doesn't mean that everything they do is inherently right. And also to like look to the past, how police officers have systematically targeted people of color and look to the future on how we can fix that. Because like how I mentioned again in the poem, how police officers can kill a 12 year old um, and not see any jail time, that's a huge issue. And as a nation, we need to, again, hold police officers accountable and make sure that if they commit a crime, that they're also charged and eventually put in jail for that crime. I haven't had any personal experiences with the Black Lives Matter movement outside of my own blackness. I have a lot of friends who have been directly involved in the movement. I actually had a friend in Philly who put on a protest where they laid on the ground um, for a specific amount of time, I believe it was to indicate how long Michael Brown had been on the ground before the ambulance had arrived to to um, to take the body away. Basically, that's not to say, of course, that I don't feel a a direct impact from the movement and what it stands for. Um, I haven't had a direct experience with the police officer, but. After the Sandra Bland incident, I was driving in my car and I was turning left and I didn't have my turning signal on yet and the police officer was turning towards me and I like freaked out for a second. I held the wheel and I was like, wait, I need to put my turning signal on before anything happens. So I think after that experience, I wanted to, I just got a bit more paranoid. Personally, for me, I haven't had much firsthand experience, but I have a lot of experience with it in the realm of the media. Um, there's a lot on the news about Black Lives Matter, especially in light of the multitude of recent killings that we've had at the hands of police officers. I think as I progress through college and experience a more diverse group of people, I'll be able to have more direct experiences with this movement, but right now, I don't. So my experience with the Black Lives Matter movement has been kind of indirect, um, mostly on social media. Um, and one site in particular had a event called Blackout Week. And basically what it was was people of color were asked to post pictures, videos of just themselves or events that mattered a lot to them or expressed who they were. And they were appreciated on the site. And it was basically just a window of opportunity for them to be seen and be heard by the community as a whole. And it was encouraging to me to see my friends being comfortable um, with who they were and just having a voice, having the opportunity to speak and be heard and to just to be themselves. I specifically remember my first encounter with police officers outside of being at school. You know, we would have police come to our elementary school and we were just so 
enamored by them. We were we wanted to be them. I was about seven, anywhere between seven and nine years old, when the cops broke not broke in, but they forced their way into our house, and I was asleep in the bed. They were looking for my cousin. I wake up to a gun pointed in my face. He put my hands. He tried to make me put my hands behind my back, and I was like, I have a broken wrist. He was like, yeah, I, I see that. And he still pulls out cuffs. Like, when you're putting cuffs on a seven to nine-year-old. Um, when my mom came home, I told her that story, my brother and I, because my brother was there as well. And she called 911 and told the, the arresting officers, because they did take my cousin, uh, told the arresting officers to, to come back because she wanted to know exactly why an eight or nine-year-old needed to be handcuffed. And my mom's friend was there. She was like, you, you know, Jean, my mom's name, you know why, they're black. And I think that was the, not the first time that I understood that I was black, but it was the first time that I understood that my blackness was an issue for, for white people. I think growing up, I was pretty ignorant to obviously to, um, racism, especially in terms of like with the police. Um, cause I always have felt like protected by police. I've always heard positive things said like about police officers and how we should respect them and all this stuff. Um, but it wasn't until I got older and kind of like started learning about like systemic racism in American history and with, um, police officers, I kind of started to like open my eyes and realize that I get my privilege because I'm white. So, so my experience with racism on campus has kind of been maybe me being racist. I'm part of a campus ministry that's basically, we're all Asian, we're all Korean. And I think confining ourselves to groups that are so strict into the structure, just we just group to who we um, look like, who we have social, cultural connections with, but by purposefully doing that and only being involved in groups so restricting, um, kind of limits our view as students, as people, of associating with other people, and just how how we interact with the campus as a whole. So I think just my view has been um, limited in that way. Um, growing up, I've been lucky because I have a wonderful mom, and she always told me when I was younger that you are black and you are a girl. Well, when I was younger, I didn't really understand that because I didn't know why she was telling me these things about myself that I already know. But now. I understand that she was just trying to prepare me for the world that we live in now. Um, sadly, in society, I will always have to work harder than the average white girl because I am black and because I am a girl. Also, I'll always be oppressed by the other men, um, which is sad to think that this is still happening in 2016, but that's how it is. Break the chains off of me. All we want to do is be free. All we want to do is be free. All we want to do is take the chains off. All we want to do is break the chains off of me. All we want to do is be free. All we want to do is be free. Can you tell me why? Every time I step outside, I see my people die. You know that there ain't no gun they can make that can kill my soul. Oh no. All we want to do is take the chains off. All we want to do is break the chains off. All we want to do is be free. All we want to do is be free.
chance I don't wanna dance Something's got me down I will stand my ground Don't just stand around Don't just stand around So my family is actually white. I'm adopted. So it's, it's always been confusing growing up because people always wonder like, why are your parents white and you're not? And um, they don't really understand that my family is kind of cross-cultural in that way. And that just because I have white parents and a white family doesn't make me white. It doesn't make me white privilege. I don't, I don't even see like that kind of racism going on within my family. But it is interesting to see other people looking at me and going, oh, you're basically white. Um, when I'm definitely not. I've, ha I've seen more like what we've talked about, like microaggressions. One instance that comes to mind that I think actually was like, when I was like, wow, that is like actually flat, flat out racist. Um, me and my friends were eating outside at Cornerstone. And you know how cops are always really um, crazy about like jaywalking and stuff. So cops were just waiting there, like watching people jaywalk. Whenever a white kid or a group of white kids would jaywalk, they would kind of like yell at them to let them go. But then we saw two like instances of black kids get sighted. And me and my friends like were just, we were obviously just shocked. We didn't really know like what to do though. Cause like who are we to like, again, call out police officers. I feel like people don't really feel like they have like authority in that sense to do that. But I remember seeing that and just being like, that is a direct example of like what we're talking about. Um, so that's like one example that really comes to mind on how black kids and white kids are treated differently on campus and like by the police. So I grew up in and I've always lived in the same place, St. Mary's County. It's on the western shore of the bay in Maryland. It's a uh, southern Maryland. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. You probably haven't. We're a pretty conservative area. There's a strong influence of uh, the government because there's a military base that employs most of our community. Because of this, and as well as my conservative background and my parents' conservative backgrounds, I haven't really had a lot of experience with Black Lives Matter for the past few years as more and more stories have been reaching our news cycle. My mind initially was more in line with my parents where we really didn't know what happened with the situations at hand. However, as I uh, started to pay attention a little more, I started to really shift my opinion. It seems like the focus is on all the wrong things. And um, unfortunately, that's something that isn't resonating with people in other communities who aren't aware of these things. Um, besides microaggressions, I haven't experienced direct um, aggressions on UMD, but um, over spring break, I went to visit my friend on her campus, um, University of Wisconsin, Madison, and um, she was telling me about the very different racial injustice that happen there, like all the time. And one of one instance, the one black girl, she got a scholarship, and the other white girls on her floor went into the bathroom and wrote "nigger" on the wall, like all over the wall, which is really scary because that's the people she lives with and she has to share like a bathroom with. I don't know how she'll ever feel comfortable on her own campus. Um, but my friend was telling me all of these experiences that were happening while my other friend, which is like more of on the white majority, she didn't say anything, which relates to ranking and citizen and how the white majority doesn't really stand up for the black minorities. And my other friend, in the white majority was telling me later on how she doesn't understand why my one black friend kept complaining about the racial injustice which completely blew my mind because I don't understand how anything will get done if the black minority doesn't complain and I think it's very important for my friend to keep saying what is happening on campus so that there will possibly be a change. If no one says any, if she doesn't say, say anything, then no one's going to say anything. So there's not going to be any changes and they're going to continue to feel uncomfortable on their own campus. Six, seven, eight. So you wake up.
up. Okay. Five, <laughs> six, <laughs> six, five. All right. Just looking at you. This is going to be great. <laughs> One more time. All right. <laughs> All right. Five, six, seven, eight. You wake up, post up. Rock, oh, 